Greetings fellow Salt and Sassers and welcome to another video on solo RPGs. Today I want to talk to you about Midnight Melodies. Uh, my last video I covered uh, the Mythic Game Master emulator and also added in there a quick little playthrough if I may say so of my attempt at using it alongside the City of Mist which is not a uh, solo design but one that had my attention for its theme and world building I thought was very cool. However the whole thing was a little bit much I thought cognitively for me to manage uh, so I mentioned that it's easier, I find, to simply play a solo intended design. Anyway, as I finished recording this, uh, my favorite designer, Caesar Capocli, came out with Midnight Melodies, which is, coincidentally, a sort of noir investigation RPG, in which, as a solo RPG, you play as a jazz pianist who discovers they're immune to the touch of the Grim Reaper. Instead of claiming your life, the Reaper recruits you to the Department of Unauthorized Death. Each night, after your performance at the club, you find a scrap of paper in your tip jar, the name of someone taken without consent. You must unravel the mystery of these unauthorized deaths using your newfound supernatural talents and perform an eerie harmony to report on your findings to the Grim Reaper before sunrise. So this sales pitch really uh, resonated with me. I mean, obviously it doesn't have the world building of something this size, you know, being a small zine, but it had, I thought, a love interesting theme, right? Like mystery, noir, a little supernatural. So I uh, had to get myself a copy and uh, then I was thinking I would present it to you today because I had a really good time with it. Uh, like all of Caesar's design, uh, this is a very rules light in terms of resolution. So in character creation, uh, you would either pick or roll for your name, first name and codename. So I think I was Alex Parker. My codename was uh, Whisper. Uh, and then uh, after that, we look at actions. So we have talk, move, force, handle and discern. So I think they're all fairly uh, intuitive, but talking is the ability to persuade, convince, uh, inform, negotiate. Move is coordination, run, sneak, jump, climb. Force is physical strength, fighting, breaking, or wrecking. Handling is finesse, skill, use of tools. Discern is sort of more of a perception. Check if we can get it like that. So as part of character creation, uh, actually, let me take you to the character sheet because I think it's pretty neat. You would put a plus sign to two actions in which you're particularly gifted. For me, I, I went with talk and handle and one in which you're not. I was pretty uh, bad at force myself. So this would grant you a plus one to your roll if you added a, uh, a plus sign and a minus one give you a minus one to a roll. And that's basically much it. So name, pronoun, codename, which two actions you're better than average, which one you're less good than average. That's a little uh, cheat sheet of your power. We'll cover that in a minute. And this is what you're hoping to find. So as you are investigating, uh, you will, every time that your uh, investigation takes a, a, an important turn, you will roll to get a, a first note. And then three notes will form the first chord, uh, three more notes give you a second chord, so three more notes give you a third chord. So technically you're looking at least nine scenes to complete a whole game. And then these are the chords you would have to play for the Grim Reaper to summarize the findings of your investigation. Blue notes here, you start with six. This is basically your uh, energy, power, whatever. It's what you would use to use your special talents. So as you investigate, the first thing that usually happens is that you find a name in your tip jar. So one would go to the victim page and simply roll a name. You would leave the occupation and secret tables for later. So just a name to start with, and then would begin the game. So, doo -doo -doo -doo. let's go back here. Action rolls. So as discussed, if you try to take a, an action that you want to invite a bit of luck into, you would roll the die. Whatever you get, you may add one or subtract one, or maybe not at all, and then you would get the results. Understanding the result of the action roll is as follows. Did it go as expected? Which is not the same as did you succeed? So it's possible to succeed at what you were doing without it going as expected. So I could have convinced someone to help me, but the information they gave me was useless, for example, right? So it's, it's, it's an interesting twist on the resolution. This is something that Caesar's done in a few of his other games, and I really enjoy it because from a solo perspective, it's, it can be hard to hit a, a no 
when you need the story to keep moving forward. So this is a no but, no and, no yes, yes but, yes and. So all results are conditional, so to speak. Uh, so they add a twist, which is also good because it helps you keep the narrative flowing. So very neat. This simple system is also used as an oracle, should you need one in play. So yes, no oracle, uh, you know, do I know this person, yes or no? Uh, if you think it's likely, you can add a plus one. If you think it's unlikely, you add a minus one. And then you use the result. No, you don't know them, but, uh, you know, uh, their friendly fellow may want to talk to you anyway. Example. Um, two, 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 two. Then there's uh, supernatural talents also. Uh, which is sort of the gifts from the Grim Reaper to help you with your investigation. So in addition to sort of the usual way you can talk, because you are working in a department of unauthorized death, you have been gifted the power of spirit communication. So you can basically talk with the dead. Ethereal passage lets you walk through walls, you know, ghost sight without, you know, being dead. Aura impact allows you to affect the aura of someone. Phantom Touch uh, lets you move things up and around you. Uh, it can also help you sense the memories tied to an object. And Echoes of Time, uh, which lets you discern either the past or the future of a particular place. So these are cool talents. They actually really lend a very cool like supernatural feel to how the investigation unfolds, in my opinion. Again, to use these, you would have to spend one of your six blue notes. You can get blue notes back throughout the game by basically having a really human moment. So as you use blue notes, you sort of start losing touch with your humanity. So doing something really, really human. Like in my game, I would have my character, you know, light up a smoke, drink some coffee in some like dingy diner. So I'm really imagining like, again, like this is kind of a noir, which I kind of picture as a corrupted Sin City slash Gotham mixed with like a little Pink Panther theme song sort of situation. Anyway, so, you know, so you would give them a really human moment where they can connect with the world in a very sort of physical way. There were other ways to do that too, but, you know, this is PG-13, so I won't go into what my character has been up to. In any case, um, so that's how you do. So the first time you play, you define the victim based on a table. And then you conduct your investigation. And for this, uh, you're given different sort of framework to do it, one of which is quite freeform. So you can roll on the uh, motive table to basically, motif table, sorry, to basically get a series of words to prompt an idea. Um, you can go by challenges. So alternatively, you can kind of go by uh, the type of challenges. So is it a, mo a move challenge in this scene? Is it going to be a talk challenge or a force challenge to give you an idea of building your next step? Or you can go with the story beats, which basically tells you what the tones or the notes you'll be getting identify with. So the first chord is about finding out who the person is, how they die, and the next clue kind of thing. I did a bit of a mixture of the chords because I found them really helpful uh, in a bit of free form in between the two. I thought it was a very good way to, to go at it. Um, I used the motif table to sort of feed some of the scenes that I created where the fewer ideas of what the scene should look like. Uh, so basically I started my player, you know, she uh, finished playing her piano, then she uh, got the name in the tip jar, decided to go to this sort of dive bar where cops hang out after their shift to try to get one talking because usually, you know, an unauthorized death is, is odd. So it draws the attention of the police. Uh, and that's sort of how my story started. So it was, it was a good layout, uh, again, for how to proceed, what to do next, how to use talents. Um, it was a, a very fun thing. Once you sort of conclude your scene and you think you found a note, so something significant, you would roll on a table of tones and record the note on the character sheet up here. And once you have concluded your investigation and you have all nine notes, then it is time for you to find um, a ghost piano, which in the story is talk about an instrument that is forgotten or ignored by the living, but still resonant with memories. It could be an old dust covered upright piano in a corner of a deserted ballroom or once cherished baby uh, grand left behind an abandoned mansion. It could be anything you will. In my case, I've got this guy here because at the end, the author actually encourages you to play your chords 
uh, to on an actual instrument or use a, a online version to actually hear the chords that you created through your uh, narrative. I thought that was a very cool way to end uh, an RPG session. Like there was something really cool. And again, not that my piano is particularly grand, but because I have actually absolutely no musical knowledge, it's useful that the uh, notes are marked with their actual, uh, I'll say name. So it, my, what little musical education I have was in French. So we used do, ré, mi, fa, sol, si, do. So I don't know what these letters are. Um, so it was very helpful to have this toy piano with me to uh, walk me through this. But yeah, so this is Midnight Melodies. Noir, very interesting, very easy to play, uh, journaling involved. So again, if you're just looking for crunchy mechanic, this is not it. This is really more of a bring your imagination, make up a story, like find yourself wrapped up in the mystery you're building yourself type of thing. Again, not a lot of world building in there. So it's helpful to walk into this with... Uh, I don't know, a bit of preconceived notion as to what the city is. Like this doesn't describe the city or its inhabitant or its quarters. I actually ended up drawing with some of the like quarters described for City of Mist. Obviously there was no rifts or anything like that. But you know, I did create some supernatural beings that weren't in here. Oh yeah, I should talk about that actually. So at the end, you know, you can find the victim, their occupation, what their secrets were. So like were they obsessed with old maps or whatever? This can help give you ideas. And then there's the entities. So these are basically the bad guy that killed the dude. So what is their name? What's their description? What's their trait? And what was their motivation? So it does provide a lot of like the core of the answers of what you need to finish the investigation. But like I said, for creating location, for creating NPCs, like you kind of have to really lean into the genre. So it was helpful to have some, uh, you know, I say background story, but I mean, again, like it could have come from Sin City or could have gone from anywhere where you have this sort of cliche noir city that you are investigating. So Minette Melodies, a good recommendation for me, had tons and tons of fun playing it. Uh, highly recommend if uh, that's the genre and if you enjoy journaling games, again, like, you know, very simple rules mechanism, not a lot of tweaking to your character, but they really can, you really can flesh them out in a thematic storytelling sort of way. And with that, I'll wish you a very good day.